And when you're at cause, it's more life happening for you or with you. You're moving with it. You're not attaching to impermanence. You're not attaching to identity, but you're allowing yourself to have a total view. One example of how we can look at integral view is having the full picture. And an example that I really love from Alan Watts, where you know, I learned a lot of this from, is that he talks about how when we look in the sky, we look at the constellations of the stars. From our position in the universe, from Earth, we look at the Big Dipper. It looks like the Big Dipper from here. But if we were to look at it from a different point in the universe, it would look like a totally different set of stars. It would look like a different constellation. It might not look like the shape of the Big Dipper. But because we have this limited frame of reference from our perspective in the universe, that's what it looks like. So to have an integral view really and truly comes down to a new concept of Zen Stoicism that we call the dichotomy of knowing. So the dichotomy of control is a concept of Stoicism that is really, really powerful. It's looking at what you can control and what you can't control, embracing what you can't control and letting it go, and then putting your focus into what you can control. Now, the interesting thing about that is that there is very little you can control, but the reality is that that's all you need in order to actually make progress in your life, to make progress in your growth, to have a meaningful life, to focus on what you can control. And really and truly, the, real, the only things that we can control are our perspective, so how we might choose to look at something, and what action we take or what we say. Right? These are the things that are in our control. Everything else, for the most part, is outside of our direct control. We might be able to influence things, but we can't necessarily control them. So the dichotomy of knowing works very similar. Now, the dichotomy of knowing was inspired from the concept of Sadhguru that we discussed in the last episode called limited identity. Now, limited identity comes from a limiting set of beliefs. So before we get into the dichotomy of control, we're going to break down what does it mean to have a belief. A belief is nothing but a feeling of certainty about something that you don't actually know. Now, most of the time, people treat their beliefs as something that they know. And the reason why they treat it as something that they know is because there is this really strong sense of conviction and certainty. There is a lot of emotion tied around it and a lot of attachment in terms of identity to it. And that is why when we think about our beliefs, we hold them so strongly. And when people poke at our beliefs, so they attempt to try to violate our beliefs, we get up in arms about it. And having a limited identity comes with a limiting set of beliefs. If I believe, for instance, that I am a lazy person, if I believe that my identity is a lazy person, there are a set of beliefs that come with that. Per, for instance, it could mean like, I also believe that I'm a procrastinator. It could be, I don't like to work hard. It could be, I don't have the energy to work hard or I don't have the creativity. And these are all beliefs that would come with the territory of that limited identity. However, I can look at things like I'm a very organized or productive person. Now, while that sounds good, that can have its own limitations as well, because the person who assumes themselves to be a productive person might also throw in the beliefs like, I, I don't do things like go out and party with my friends. And then that might divulge into like, well, I don't like to do things fun because I need to be productive all the time. So that could have its own limitations as well. So the point of why we're discussing this and why we're even bringing this up is because a belief, again, is a feeling of certainty about something that you don't actually know. So what exactly does that mean? Well, the example that Sadhguru would talk about when he talked about this difference of belief and knowing when it came to limited identity is that if you hold up both of your hands, you know that you have two hands. You don't believe that you have two hands. You know you're having a direct experience where you have two hands. And the dichotomy of knowing is essentially capturing the essence of that. There is a difference between what you know and what you believe. And the fact is, there is very, very little that we actually know about ourselves, about our lives, about reality itself. For instance, you inhabit this body, or I mean, you inhabit your own body, I inhabit this body, but in, in doing so, we don't, grow, we don't choose to grow our hair or we don't maybe, unless you study this, know how it, how it grows. We don't know how we pump blood through our body. We don't know how our thoughts come up, but they just happen. There's a happening. There's a rhythm to this whole thing. There's a rhythm to our biological existence. We don't all know it, 
unless you're, a, of course, a person who studies it. But at the same time, even that has its own limited view and vantage point of the knowing. What we do know, or what we might know about ourselves, at least what I've come down to, is the only thing I really and truly know. And my, my good friend, Sean Cecil of the Oculus Institute, who's been interviewed on this podcast a couple of times, is the one that gave me these words in this language. But what I do know is that I'm a sentient being having a subjective experience in this, in this moment here, in the now. That's what I know. And so the dichotomy of knowing is recognizing what do you actually know and what do you not know. And this is a very liberating perspective to have because once you can recognize what you know, it allows you to let go and actually experience the present moment, experience this life of yours rather than trying to put it into a box, rather than trying to put it into these categories, uh, you know, fighting the impermanence and fighting the lack of, uh, of an inherent or automatic identity that you were just born with. Instead of doing that, instead of attaching to the impermanence and the, you know, the things that we want to attach our identity to, we get to just be here by acknowledging what we know and what we don't know. Now, I was on a, uh, a call the other day, a mastermind call, and one of the questions that was asked is, you know, how, to, how can I find peace and contentment in the ever-growing and changing of life? Like, even when things are good, how do I find peace and contentment? And I remember the, the first thing that came up for me, my answer, is I thought about the dichotomy of knowing and I realized to myself, well, the way that I find peace and contentment a lot of the time is by not trying to have peace or contentment, by not trying to conclude or box in the thing that I'm trying to give myself certainty or security with. Instead, what I do is I recognize that I don't know and I tell myself like I don't actually know. I don't know what's going to give me peace and contentment and security right now. And I find my reassurance in the very fact that I don't know and the admission of not knowing. And in that admission of not knowing, I find a sense of liberation in terms of my perspective. In other words, to have an integral view comes with this idea of realizing that we don't know. And it was, I believe it was Socrates that said, you know, I'm the wisest person in the world because I know nothing. Not knowing things or not believing as many things and allowing yourself to be more fluid, more open and receptive to life so that life is passing through you, that you're not trying to cling on to it, is what gives us that peace of mind. So ironically, by not chasing peace, by not ch chasing some sense of reassurance for our existential burdens, that is where we find that peace. That is why, where we find that integral view. The truth is to have that integral view begins with deciding, well, not even deciding, but almost admitting to yourself and embracing what you don't know.